Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be making a solder squid. But not just any solder squid, this solder squid is made from concrete, made in a 3D printed mold. This, uh, this concrete makes it heavier than, say, wood or plastic, but non-conductive like you might see in metal or something like that. It's got a couple of alligator clips you can use to grip your board or whatever else you're working on. There's also a larger clamp in the back and a fan used to blow all the solder smoke away. You just turn on the fan with the 9 volt battery and it does away with all your solder, just like that. So looking at the design, I designed it first in Fusion 360. This is the outer section that will hold the concrete together while it's being, being cured. It's got a couple nubs in it that hold up the, the solder squid, the coolant hose portion that actually, actually hold the alligator clips and such. This design has worked much better than I even thought. I, th I thought maybe it would pull out at some point, but it's, it's held very, very firmly so far. And the weight of the concrete really holds it down nicely, as well as the, the rubber pads that I put in the bottom just keep it to just keep it in place. The top there is going to be hollow on the inside to hold all the concrete, and it, it's hold, held together between the top and bottom with binder clips, because how awesome are they? Put a couple more radii on here and then I'll print it out on my Monoprice Maker Ultimate 2 printer. Looking good there and then there's the outside with a lot of stringy stuff. After some cleanup it was time to place the nubs, at least the base of the coolant hoses and then there's the binder clips as I mentioned earlier. Had to rearrange those a few times but once I got it, once I got it in correctly, mix up the concrete and poured it in. Looks kind of kind of gross there. Coming out, yeah, had had to add some water later. It's just not nearly not really viscous enough. I guess that's the right word. And as seen here, when I used the orbital sand around it to try to smooth everything out, it just wasn't wasn't really making any progress. So I added more water as well as some more concrete, and then just started kind of pushing it around to trying to get it into the cracks around the coolant hose that I was using. More water, and then it was time for more vibration with the orbital sander. It's getting somewhat smooth here and it just, just took a long time. It wasn't quite as quite as um, dramatic as, as the concrete solder, concrete flower pots that I used earlier. I'll, I'll put the link to that in the upper right hand corner. But nonetheless, after a day or so, day or two, I popped this out, undid the outer cover and look at that. Looks like a nice, nice cake or something. Obviously you don't want to eat this, but that'd be pretty nasty. I was hoping to reuse this for some more solder squids, but as you can see here, once I took it off, it just it just started to just disintegrate. Yeah, that's definitely not getting used again. Probably my strategy for the next one, if I make if I make another one, is to make the make more of a draft angle on the pips that hold up the hold up the solder squids themselves. But for now, Trying to get it out, that didn't work at all. I thought maybe it would collapse the whole thing, ca cause it to shatter. This design, however, has turned out to be quite resilient. It didn't break there, and I put it on the grinder just to try to get some of the, the PLA off of it. You won't see it from the bottom, but I wanted to make sure it was at least flat. So it looks pretty good, and I put these plastic nubs on. Keep a lot of these. You can get them from China for like 99 cents for a whole, whole set, so they're great to have on hand just to keep stuff, projects from not slipping around. I had to work with those holes a little bit just to get them exactly right so it didn't wobble back and forth, but after a while it looked pretty good. And if you're wondering where I got the, the coolant hoses from, well this is my old project, this wooden solder squid. That worked fine, but it wasn't nearly as heavy as you'll see in just a minute. Pop those in and it looks pretty good. i also go over a new way that I came up with to attach the alligator clubs to the hose, so stay tuned for that. There's the solder itself, the solder holder. I finished this all off with a coated sealer. Actually, maybe two by the time I get done with it. But this looks so much better once you put that on there. It's kind of like finishing a woodworking piece with, with urethane or something. Just just transforms it from something that's raw into something that just looks really good. That all went nicely and you can see it dry right here. And you can see how much it weighs. 20.06 ounces with the coolant hoses on. Compare that to the wooden piece which weighs about 9 ounces and you can see that it's much much heavier which is in this case very good. It's also a bit smaller so it won't take up quite as much of your workspace. 
Once you're ready to attach some alligator clips to the coolant hose, just heat it up with a heat gun, then mark it with a marking tool or a punch. Had to make sure this was big enough, just took, took a little while to get it just big enough that it would slide in, but not, not too big that it would come out once it was cool. The idea here is that when it cools, it, um, it collapses down on the alligator clips and keeps it really firmly in place. I actually wasn't sure, had my doubts about whether that would keep it in place or not. So the other thing I did was I put a divot on the, the side here to keep it, well, to keep it fully in place. And that's worked really well so far. Also put some heat shrink tubing to keep it from marking boards and stuff so much. Looks good on that account too. And then I had to put it on. These are legitimately pretty hard to get on, so I'm not I'm not that much of a weakling, I don't think. Here I'm soldering up a voltage regulator for my LED supercapacitor flashlight project. The solder squid worked well for holding everything, but you can notice the smoke is just, just getting up into my face. I didn't really want that for obvious reasons. The solution, of course, was to add a fan. I thought about making a fancy 3D printed part for this to keep a computer fan on it, but instead I decided to just use zip ties. These have been so good in so many of my projects, it's sometimes you often forget just how useful they are. With the hole in the coolant hose, I was able to pull this through and it held it very nicely. Clip the ends off and then hook it up to a 9 volt battery. You have to put two, two wires in the positive and one on the negative. I think one of them is for a PWM control. And I think this is a 12 volt fan, but 9 volt seems to work pretty well. There's a little control, a, a button switch to keep it on. And look at that, looks really nice. Turn that on, turns on as you would expect, and turns it off. At some point in the future, maybe I'll put some sort of timer, watchdog timer to turn it off after a certain amount of time, because I'm sure at some point I'll forget about it. Our other thing was I attached this giant clamp from Harbor Freight with zip ties itself. Again, I could have made a 3D printed thing, but zip ties work pretty well there. I'm really happy with how this turned out. The sealed concrete looks beautiful and it's heavy enough to support my projects and yeah, really no, no complaints whatsoever. The fan, however, if it's in the wrong direction, it actually pushes the smoke towards you. So you got to make sure that's in the right direction. Maybe I'll put a put a big red arrow or something. It does have little arrows on it, but it's just not, not that visible. So there are a few ways that this solder squid could be improved, but overall I'm quite happy with the design. I'll put the files up on GitHub so you can, you can make one yourself, or it'd be pretty easy to make this with really any sort of concrete holder you want to do. Wouldn't have to be 3D printed whatsoever. So, so there's my pretty terrible circuit that I made. I, I could call this a free form circuit if you want to use that term liberally as I didn't have a design, but it does turn on the LED. If you want something a little bit not so shoddily made, I made, got to design this and ordered it from Osh Park. It's my first PCB and I'm soldering up there on my solder squid. So hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, definitely check back, subscribe, give it a thumbs up or, or not, whatever. You, you know, it's a free country. Or maybe it's not, depending on where you live or your political viewpoint. Either way, though, I'm so glad you watched, and thanks for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.